what is up guys sorry for the long wait i know i've been slacking on making some content but i'm all i have been also waiting on parts and at the same time you know i've been working you know i have my everyday life as well and sometimes it could catch up to me especially with the kids but so far this has came in compared well aside from the other stuff that i ordered as well i also got another little surprise for you guys but this is something i've been waiting for a long time and this is the 271 big brake kit for the 11th gen honda civic also for the si's and if i'm correct also for the touring but this is the big brake kit guys you don't know how happy i am to finally get this it's been a minute that i've been wanting it and i finally got it but yeah just wanted to unbox this with you guys and then also show you the installation on how to do it So, this is what the kit also provides, which is pretty clutch on their behalf. Thank you, 271, for that. They do provide you with stainless steel lines, so you don't have to go and buy stainless steel lines from God knows where. Because there's sometimes, you know, if you get a big brake kit, sometimes you got to see which one fits so for you to do the little research you know it does waste a little bit of time i'm pretty sure you can find it out but they make life easier they just send you everything you need in order for you to just install and have a good day basically Let's see what's this i'm guessing these are the brake pads if i'm correct let's check them out So these are the hardware that they give you this little thing right here that looks like a nail polish this is like touch up paint just in case if something happens or a little accident happens that you chip away the paint they got you covered don't worry see i'm telling you these guys they know what they're doing and they treat their customers right don't listen to those in the internet 271 they do a good job these are all oh, there we go these are actually the brackets in order for you to mount the caliper the big caliper so this is very important you need this and of course again these are the hardware that goes into it i'm guessing these are the bolts that go into you mounting that bracket onto the spindle and then the actual caliper to the bracket next box we got calipers let's check this out Oh man, oh man, I'm gonna need two hands to do this. Give me one second, I'll get right back to you. No, guys, check this out. It's so clean. Obviously it's brand new, but bro, this, this red is fire. I am so glad I went with this. In a sense, I chose red because I wanted it to look OEM. You see how the Type R comes with the red calipers? Anything, even if you get, for example, a Grand Cherokee SRT or a Charger SRT, you get the red Brimbo calipers, you know, from factory. So I chose the red so it could look factory. I am all about OEM plus. I like it to be all OEM. You know just makes it look simple but you do have the option of also getting it in orange or in black and aside from that i mean if you get them then obviously you could probably powder coat them but you just got to go to somebody that you know you could definitely trust but the red fire 
and there's street pass that they recommend and they also give you with this kit they do show you guys what other brake pads you could use in the future that's one thing maybe some people will ask that question but say hey what what what, what am i gonna buy what am i gonna buy like what am i supposed to buy when these go bad or the rotors well the rotors they have the the information you need for you to go and order it because it's a two-piece rotor which i'll show you right now and i'll explain it to you while we're looking at it but for the brakes they give you a little list on their website and i will put I'll put it in the description on the bottom as well too with the part number for you to know which other brake pads you could buy for this that will fit perfectly fine so but as of for now these are good from what they say it's good for the streets and for a little you know a little rough riding but again beautiful right side brake rotor Oof. look at that look at that and it doesn't it's not that bad in weight i can tell you that and as you can see what i was trying to tell you these rotors are two-piece so basically once you take out these bolts this comes off and basically separates from the center so when you're doing maintenance on this when you take these bolts off you're obviously disposing this this is what you're changing this you maintain always the same if you want to clean it up, paint, paint it in the future, if it's rusty, you can do whatever you want. But these are replaceable. In a sense, this replaceable, this you keep. So, first start is, as you guys already know, you guys got to jack up the car. Take out your wheel. And then once you do that, I have the car jacked up all around right now. Because once I do this... I'm also going to bleed the back brakes just to be on the safe side as well too. I know I'm just changing the calipers in the front, but at the same time, I suggest you guys to just bleed all four just to be on the safe side, you know? Especially you don't want no air in the back brakes because again, we're opening this up. We're taking out the, the, um, the brake line because we're changing into the stainless steel one. So, like I said, it's always better to just do everything right. And just for your own sake, you know, at least you know that you did it all around when you're doing this. If you guys end up doing the big brake kit as well, too. So for starters, what I would do right here, right? Since I'm taking out this whole entire thing, I'm not going to worry about taking it apart or anything. I'm going to leave the brake pads, the bracket, the caliper itself all together. So I'm basically going to just take, well... I'm going to take off the two 17 millimeter bolts that are behind the actual rotor. You're going to see there's one and here's the other one, right? Oh, right there. So once you take that off, silly me, I took off the bottom one. I loosened this one, but forgot to mention to you guys, take off this 12 millimeter bolt that holds the line. So it won't, you know, so you can have more play in order for you to move around with the caliper because obviously once you take out the caliper and everything completely obviously you only have so much length to it so it's going to be very uncomfortable so start off by taking out the 12 millimeter 12 millimeter bolt first take this off first then you do the 17s and once you do the 17s as you can see right here i took off the last 17 and voila the whole caliper everything just take it off and i'll figure out right now where i'm going to put it i mean obviously i gotta take this off completely but once you take off this 14 millimeter bolt that's holding the the brake line so to avoid some of making a mess especially depending on where you're doing it if you're in your garage outside or whatever so nobody to complain to you or for you to not be frustrated yourself that you have to clean i got my pan here which i recommend get a little pan oil pan or anything anything that could just you know be on the bottom to catch the brake fluid when it drips down so because once you take off this 14 millimeter bolt obviously the brake fluid is going to come out i stopped it here because obviously we're going to be changing the the brake line but since i'm going to be doing this first right now leave that for last i pinched it so it will stop it from actually leaking more than what it's supposed to if you was to just leave it alone 
so it's an idea for you guys if you want to do and it and just like that once i took off the 14 millimeter bolt as you can see the line is not throwing that much brake fluid what did throw the majority of it right here was the actual caliper obviously because it was coming out of it so i put it down like that so it could just drip off you know so when i put it away you know there's no fluid inside that will make a mess wherever i store it so now that's done now to take off the rotor to take off the rotor obviously i don't know if you guys have this tool but this is like uh how would you say uh us an impact screwdriver basically you hit it with a hammer right here in the back and it'll spin it for you with the pressure of it being banged on pause but um yeah since these are not that easy to take off for in a sense that you could just take a screwdriver and try to take them off maybe you can get lucky but there are ways to do it obviously the best way just buy the tool if not i've seen people take a small screwdriver put it there hit it with the hammer and then with a a pressure plier or a plier they just crack it open but today i'm only going to be showing you the way i'm doing it right now which is easier and this tool comes in handy if you're able to get it definitely do it so once you take off that screw the rotor comes right off there's no need to bang it or anything especially you know these are new cars so i doubt that you have to bang it if by any chance you have that problem that the rotor does not move i say get a rubber mallet if you can you have a rubber mallet tap it a couple of times right here not the actual face of the rotor but tap it around the center part and you'll see i don't think you got to go crazy on it so it will shake it up a little bit and then you can remove it this i'll probably clean up with a wire brush and then put some anti-seize later just to you know be on the safe side so it won't get frozen up or anything like that check it out easy peasy all you got to do take your rotor put it in a line where the nut goes and right there you put it on screw back the nut you don't got to put it all the way tighten you could just hand tighten it and at least it's not going to move from there you get me see at least it helps you out that the rotor is not wobbly or moving while you're doing the rest of the installation but that's it for that now to get the calipers up now that the rotors are in next up is the bracket the bracket you're going to face it this way so the part on top that sticks out that goes towards the the engine right like towards the engine so that all you gotta do is see, put it in as so then you take the small hex bolts that they give you the small ones because they give you four long ones as well you take the small ones and those small ones go in there so i recommend you guys these are the bolts that you're putting on right to hold the bracket into place here so what i recommend is put a little bit of blue loctite if you guys have and and if you don't i i highly recommend just do it just to be on the safe side um these are torqued down if i'm correct to 64 to 70 foot pounds of torque if i'm correct so at least you guys have an idea better be safe than sorry so do everything to specs and you won't have no issues now once the bracket is all mounted and torqued to spec the next thing is the actual calipers so now for these, obviously, you're going to be using the, the longer bolts that they provide you in the kit. Look at these, man. Beautiful. And there we have it, guys. The calipers and the rotors are all mounted up. These things are beautiful. Literally beautiful i'm so happy you don't you don't understand the joy that i have him inside of me right now but now all that's left is the brake lines as you can see everything is all good 
nice and tighten all to specs and um yeah all we're missing now is the the stainless steel brake lines and then from there we could jump on to the other side get that done and then from there also like i said we gotta bleed them and get the fluids running into these bad boys by the way guys these top bolts the long one are also torqued down to the same specs as the back from 64 to 71 71 foot pounds of torque so just so you can have an idea so for the brake lines you guys basically have to loosen this 10 if i'm correct by the way i bought this tool in AutoZone. this is basically a 12 and a 10 together but as you can see it has this space open basically it will help you out go through it and actually get in there this tool actually came in handy if you're able to go and buy this before you actually do this install this will help you i'm pretty sure you could probably take uh a regular open head right and put it in there but i say just go with this one just to be on the safe side because obviously this grips it all around even though it has that space but it has more grip compared to you using an open head next you know you try to like force it and then it kind of like strips that not you know like you don't want that that's gonna make a big problem so to be better safe than sorry get this tool it was only like six bucks so definitely get it and as of this I, if i'm correct i'm about to check this out right now to see how you're able to remove this so before you do that also keep in mind you have to remove this uh clip that is here so i use this um these pliers right and i gripped onto it and i pulled forward and there we go it came right off and once you finish unscrewing that obviously there you go brake line is off just be careful taking it out so guys once you take off everything right you take your stainless steel brake line you take off the nut that's on top of it because the the line actually comes with a secondary nut so you basically take this off right i'm gonna show you guys once you take off the original air um brake line you remove it then you take off the nut that's on top of this one you basically slide it in where it was the the original one and then on top you put the nut that you took off and you put it and you start screwing it on together that's how it's going to sandwich this right here so the line won't move once you do it at least even by hand you get it down by hand then the actual hard line you put it on top and then you just basically screw that in the center of the airline i mean the airline i'm sorry i'm thinking about air suspension but the actual brake line because as you can see here there's threads inside as well too so that is for this 10 millimeter one right so once you do that and it's all nice and tightened this top one is a 19 and the bottom one is a 17 so you take the 19 open head and a 17 open head and you just tighten this together to sandwich it and as you can see no movement all nice and dandy and then over here for the new banjo bolt it's a 12 millimeter com compare obviously the original one was a sorry let me focus so this one is a 12 millimeter and the original one was a 14 millimeter but got that that in obviously with the banjo bolt it comes with like two washers these like brass washers one of them you put them onto the actual bolt right as just like this right so you put one inside first then you put it through the brake line and on the opposite side once it comes through the brake line you put the other one in and then you start screwing it in together then you sandwich the whole thing together when you're tightening this i say give it a nice hand tighten don't overdo it because you could create a big problem so a nice little tug hand tighten you should be fine 
just make sure you, you i'm pretty sure you'll know exactly when it's all good no need to go further so as you can see here everything is done here it's connected here some of the brake fluid already started flowing through it because i saw this was leaking brake fluid once this was already connected and now to get this all nice and tight that it won't move or anything the kit provides you these brackets right here if i'm correct i think this is what's used to hold the actual stainless steel line through the rubber grommet that they give you so i'm guessing that this end goes where the 12 millimeter bolt goes you bolt it down and then you attach this to the bottom end that is like a hook and then from there everything is all set and as you can see guys this is the finished product this thing looks so freaking good literally it just looks it's like a perfect duo air suspension and big brake kit <laughs> perfect and as you can see there's the bracket with the 12 holding to the little grommet that the stainless steel line came with and yeah that's pretty much it guys literally once you take off the rotors and i mean the calipers the original calipers the way i showed you with the two 17 millimeter bolts take that off the thing comes completely off take out the 12 first obviously sorry about that i keep forgetting to say that first but take off the 12 first get the stock lines loose once you take that off take off the or you could take off the line first off the back of the caliper if you want to and let it drip off but it's up to you guys as long as you know how to take it off and this information helps you out but at the end of the day as long as everything is put back on correctly that's what's most important and i hope my little guide to you with this helps you guys out install your big berry kit because i'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then i'll show you guys how the car looks afterwards so let me wrap it up on this side now i think well even though it's already wrapped up i'm not gonna do anything i'm just gonna jump into the other side get that done and then we're gonna lower the car once obviously we get this bled so guys i wanted to show you this trick that well it's not a trick it's something that you could do in order to get this done by yourself if you don't have a buddy to pump the brakes for you so i bought this oem one-man brake bleeder from AutoZone. I saw a lot of good reviews on it. It works and from the looks of it, it really does work because I have no complaints as of right now with it. So one thing that I did like about this kit, it came with this little adapter. So you could basically put one line into the bottle of where the brake fluid is gonna go. And then this, this caliper comes with two nipples in a sense, pause, that will help, well, not help, uh, where you could bleed the brakes. So. With this adapter, it splits into two. So I was able to do both of them at the same time while they just go into the bottle. And as you can see right here, no airs at all. Everything is good. And what you do with this is once you open, once you put this these lines onto the actual nipple uh, and everything is connected as you see right here, because it's pretty self-explanatory once you buy the kit and you see it you put the long line into one and the two separate ones into each one is right here then you go inside once you crack obviously you crack them open a little bit and then so you crack both of them open this one and this one and you go inside the car and you start pumping the brakes you pump it at least four to six times depending on how it goes once you get to the fourth you should come outside check it out if you still see that there's like a whole bunch of bubbles then you go back and you pump it at least two more times until you see no bubbles at all as you can see here no bubbles at all so that means that the, the process is done so now all i gotta do is just close it up and that's it so guys the only reason i haven't shown the car like that throughout this video and what's around me because obviously I have my wheels on the side but now to show you guys the finished product check how the car is looking now 
that's right we got brand new wheels on it i got all i got well i took off the touring wheels and i got myself some work wheels see our guys and check it out now with the big brake kit which clearly as you can see it cleared perfectly no need to worry with this kind of wheel if you're doing the big brake kit on this type of si 11 gen civic so the wheels are 18 by nine and a half the offset is 38 as you can see i went with 225 35 18 tires just to give it a little stretch i mean don't get me wrong i would have loved to make them a little more meaty but right now there's a show that's coming up here in new jersey it's called fitted lifestyle so i was like you know what let's let's give it a little stancy look in the meantime especially since it's on bags and everything but eventually the tires will change depending on you know how everything goes because so guys so far so good definitely could feel a difference in the braking now in the car like it's much smoother but yet firm like it stops on the dime and it slows down the car real quick i haven't jammed the brakes like that to that extent because at the same time you know we gotta break them in now we gotta break in the brake pads and making sure you know that everything works perfectly fine right now it's just the break-in process so i'm not trying to abuse it but like i said complete difference i highly recommend this little upgrade if you're trying to change your brakes obviously it makes the car look very nice and hey it's more safer so i'll leave it at that i hope you guys enjoyed the video today um again i'd want to thank you guys you know i'm sorry that it took me a bit to make another video i mean at the same time you know i have my regular everyday job and at the same time too i've been waiting for parts the next part that i got that should be coming soon is an exhaust so once that comes in i will show you guys i'll show you guys how to put it on as well and, and we get this car going because then after the exhaust i have two more parts in mind hopefully i could get those and get it asap so we could then take this car to get tuned and see how much power it throws down so again thank you guys like and subscribe see you on the next one